now as Illinois Congressman and ranking minority member of the House Administration Committee, Rodney Davis. Uh, Congressman, welcome to the program. The supply chain right now we know is a contributing factor. President Biden signed the Bipartisan Ocean Reform Shipping Act this week. Will this have a significant impact on inflation and shipping? I don't think it's going to have a significant impact in the short term, but it's a good first step. Uh, but there are many steps that the Biden administration ought to be taking that they haven't. Uh, they were warned by Democratic-leaning economists at the end of last year not to spend another trillion-plus dollars in the American Rescue Plan, but they did it anyway. And now they're wondering how inflation has really grasped the American economy. Well, it's because of their incompetence. And I certainly hope that they can release some energy reserves, start the Keystone Pipeline again, begin putting us on a track to get those interest rates back down, and also get inflation under control. And speaking of which, the White House has said this week that there's not much that it can do in the way of lowering gas prices for consumers. President Biden has been blaming uh, big oil companies and Putin for the prices that we're seeing, the national average uh, of the price per gallon, $5. He's invited oil CEOs to the White House next week, and they've announced that he will travel to Saudi Arabia to engage in talks. Do you see either of these strategies making a difference here? So he's going to lecture oil company executives, and then he's going to go beg for oil from Middle Eastern sheiks. Uh, that doesn't seem like the plan that he ran on when he asked to be president of the United States. What he ought to do is open the Keystone Pipeline project again, sit down with those oil company executives and ask what permits that they need approved so that they can begin investing in American energy again. Now, I was at a refinery in Wood River, Illinois, yesterday. They're ready to refine more petroleum, but they don't have the ability because the Biden administration is keeps sending signals that they don't want more refined petroleum in this country. We ought to be an energy exporter. We don't need the experts telling us that we're going to come to a recession. We, every single family knows that their budget, their grocery bills, their grocery bills, their gas bills, they're putting their family budgets into a recession already. Yeah. And Congressman, switching gears for a moment, uh, we want to talk about one other development. Members of a production team for the late show with Stephen Colbert were arrested by U.S. Capitol Police uh, in a congressional office building on Thursday night. They were charged with unlawful entry. What can you tell us uh, about the incident and how the GOP plans to address this next week? Well, we're learning more and more about this incident. We do know that uh, staff members that are related to Adam Schiff initially got this group into the Cannon Building where the January 6th hearing was happening at the time. Uh, they were denied press credentials by the radio and, and, and correspondence corps, the gallery uh, that, that issues those in and around the House complex. They were escorted out, but then they were back in the building because they were escorted by somebody else who has a history with Adam Schiff. And then they were since they were in the building later at night and they were pounding on the doors of Jim Jordan and Kevin McCarthy, they were arrested. And let me tell you something, Kilmeny. I know the brave men and women of the Capitol Police are some of my best friends in Washington. It takes a lot to get arrested in a House office building. I'm interested in seeing what the police reports say because I think the ruckus was probably a little more than the Colbert team wants you to believe. Yeah. And when you put it all into context, this as the January 6th committee, I mean, we've seen obviously the rioters of January 6th being unchar charged with lawful entry for the same exact thing. Yeah, it's it's the similar charge. And and frankly, uh, you know, we're lawmakers. We ought to hold people accountable for following the law. And again, the Capitol Police officers never need to be put in a situation like Stephen Colbert's team put them in, and frankly, also the the people who let them in and left them unescorted. Remember, it's the same January 6th committee that wouldn't give press credentials to this team who's screaming that they're part of the press, that that is trying to impugn my colleague Barry Loudermilk for taking people from his home state on a tour and lunch and a gift shop visit on January 5th in the House office buildings. Yeah. It just shows the hypocrisy. And Adam Schiff's a member of this select committee circus. He ought to know better, and his team darn well ought to know better, too. We're going to investigate, and I certainly hope we hold the people who are at fault for this accountable some way. 
Meanwhile, protesters have been demonstrating outside the home of Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas over reports of an email exchange between his wife and conservative act activist Jeannie Thomas. Uh, there are calls for the attorney general to arrest these protesters. Why aren't they being prosecuted? Well, it seems there's a two-tier justice system when it comes to conservatives versus liberal justices of the Supreme Court. Uh, I, I don't see... Uh, I don't see any Democratic houses, Democrat Supreme Court justice houses being protested for any reason whatsoever. It should be off limits. The law clearly states, Kilmeny, that, that those protesters can be arrested if they're not asked to leave. But there's selective enforcement. And that, re that is really what frustrates the American people. We need to have equal enforcement of the law. There should not be a red shirt versus a blue shirt when it comes to the halls of justice. And Merrick Garland, somebody who wanted to be on the Supreme Court, I am darn glad that he never got there if this is the type of partisanship he's actually exhibiting as attorney general right now. All right, Congressman Davis, we appreciate you spending a part of your Saturday with us to break down these various stories. Thanks for that.